You see, the last Android phone I reviewed was the Google Pixel. That was quite possibly the worst Android phone I've ever tried, because in the past I've said, these Android phones aren't my favorite, but they're good, and if you like Android, you should try them. Said that about the Blue Viva 5, Nexus 6P, and even the Note 7. But with the Pixel, I was like, no, do not buy this phone. There is no reason. It had no logical senses, and it was overpriced. Underpowered piece of hardware with no software exclusive, so there was just no reason anyone should buy that. However, the Galaxy S8 was exciting to me. I've said in the past that I'm not against Samsung. I think they're a fine company that I do admire for stretching all of their fantastic hardware across lots of different operating systems, including Android, Windows 10, and even Chrome OS. And like many Apple sheep, the thing that excites me about the S8 is it shows us what the iPhone 8 can be capable of. With the curved edge-to-edge -edge display and minimal bezels, with the switch from physical to on-screen buttons. Samsung made this choice, and we're hoping that Apple is going to be doing it later in the year. Now, since I do have such loyalty to Apple, when I first saw the S8, I thought it was Samsung trying to beat Apple at their own game. Apple has retained so many of its customers over the years by making hardware and software that work seamlessly together, and of course, hardware that people love to feel. Once you get a little grasp of what it's like to wear an Apple Watch, hold an iPhone, type on a MacBook, any of those things, you just start to want one. And see, with the S8, Samsung has replicated that feeling with their own Samsung brand. When you hold the S8 and you feel the glass on both sides and you feel that aluminum around the edges that is polished clean, you love it. Any natural person would. It's definitely the best looking smartphone out there right now. So yes, I'm gonna have to admit the Galaxy S8 does look better than my iPhone. And believe me, it's it's not easy to say that. That does not come out of my mouth easily. But it is true. If we were judging these phones on looks alone, I would have to give the award to the Galaxy S8. It looks incredible. The S8 will always have the edge. Let's get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'll stop. The curved display simply melts the operating system into whatever hand is holding it. And with this new display that goes above and beyond what Samsung did with the Galaxy S7, bezels are pretty much almost gone. They're still there, they're still noticeable, but there's definitely less than we've ever had before on any other smartphone. In the past, I've said removing bezels is not a big deal, it's only for fashion, but I gotta say now, like when they are gone, man, it is cool. I can understand why people want to pay top dollar for phones with minimal bezels. The premium feeling that gives on its own. People are willing to pay for that because yeah, it is costing more now than an iPhone, which is really bold for Samsung to do. Both the S8 and S8 Plus are more than the starting price of a regular iPhone 7, but Samsung wanted to make sure these phones were done right by giving both the S8 and S8 Plus 64 gigs of memory, expandable storage if you need it. So let me just tell you about the first day I had with the Galaxy S8. The moment I unboxed it on camera for you guys, I just remember thinking, wow, can this display so much content at the same time with this new screen. Every app that is optimized to go edge to edge looks amazing and did a great job at showing as much content as possible. Twitter, Instagram suddenly feel brand new because it's almost like the phone is not there. You're just holding a screen. You see, in the photos and stuff, I was worried about the screen being too tall because it is stretching in both directions and that reaching across the screen would be a hassle because there's less reachability features and 6.2 inches of a display is a lot to work with. But the Galaxy S8, once again, really surprised me here. It is very ergonomic. I had no problem problem reaching any part of the display even with one hand. I do have big hands so that might be part of it but it was not an issue at all even though I thought it would be. I have to applaud Samsung for actually making a phone with a display that is over six inches and surprisingly portable and ergonomic. It's even slightly smaller than my iPhone 7 Plus which is at five and a half inches. Who knew that this year we would see a phone that could make this work? I love big displays of course and as long as it can fit in my pocket I'm okay with the size. Make the displays as big as possible. It's great for viewing content, interacting with our apps, and most of all watching videos. Videos. I complained and even made fun of the Galaxy S8 for not sporting 16 by 9 which means there's black bezels on the sides of your YouTube videos. Given nearly all videos we watch now are at 16 by 9 especially on our phones and with this new aspect ratio on the Galaxy S8 I thought that would create problems because if you want your video to go edge to edge you have to crop in part of the video and you're losing quality and stuff like that. You do lose a little bit of the video but it's definitely not as bad as I thought it would. It sort of depends on the YouTube video you happen to be watching but on quite a lot of what I watch watched it was no problem at all. You could see things just great and it went edge to edge on that screen and you kind of forget the phone is there while you're holding it. Having those curved corners is neat too. It's just a seamless video watching experience. No stereo speakers kind of bummed me out but not as much as I thought it would. The next thing of course I wanted to make fun of in this review was that there was no dual camera. Why didn't Samsung match the iPhone 7 Plus? That would be a great attack point for us Apple Sheep, right? Well the day I got it I opened
open that camera, turned on selective focus because I've heard so much of that, turned around and I took this photo. Sorry, you have to see my attempt at a selfie, but man, if anything can make me look not half bad, I'm pretty impressed. And that photo wowed me. It knew exactly what to focus on. It knew how to blur the backgrounds and it got colors really great. Image quality was top notch. And it was awesome because it made that photo look like it was taken with a DSLR, but it's taken by a smartphone. It made me realize it's very hard to criticize the Galaxy S8 for its camera. It's not incredibly different from the S7, but that does not make it bad at all. 4K video, as usual, looks amazing. And the optical video stabilization wasn't quite as good as what I can get on my iPhone 7 Plus, but wasn't the worst thing in the world. It was very hard to complain about. There's just nitpicky things. Several places I traveled to and visited, I would see an interesting shot potentially. And I just remember thinking all the time, what does that look like with the Galaxy S8's camera? That's how a camera should be on a smartphone. You're excited to use it. And that's generally how a smartphone just should be in general. You've got a new piece of tech that you're interested in using on a day-to-day -day basis. You're interested in making it part of your daily routine. Battery life was another big concern I had with Samsung's last fiasco, given they're taking the safe route, they're making the smaller battery. Not too big, but it's also not too small. With the S8 Plus, you get a 3500 milliamps, which is not bad, but I had a feeling that since we have an on-screen button now that has physical feedback and that the display is bigger, that would use up battery really fast, and I have no bad things to say about it. It lasted through the day with no problems. I even had the always-on display turned on, and I figured I would turn that off if the battery started getting bad and it couldn't make it through the day, but I never got to that point, so I just left it on. That always-on display did not hurt the battery life that much at all, and I'm very pleased that Samsung is creative with the way they use their batteries. Since it, of course, sports USB-C, you can fast charge. It takes an hour and 40 minutes for the phone to go from zero to 100%, and a Samsung exclusive wireless charging. Kind of waiting for other companies to pick up on that. That's impressive. I'm really glad they're on the team USB-C. Really wish my iPhone had that, but I really would have preferred it if Samsung could ship these phones with a USB-C to USB-C cable. You know, because Samsung's releasing the Galaxy Book and the Chromebook Plus, they both have USB-C ports on the side. So it would kind of make sense if with our Samsung laptops, we could charge our Galaxy S8s from USB-C to USB-C. That's the idea with USB-C, guys. The one port to end all ports. I just want to charge a phone with a laptop, people. Is that too hard? With a MacBook, you need to buy a different cable to charge your iPhone. And with the Galaxy Book or Chromebook Pro, you'll have to use the charger included for that laptop. You could just all coordinate a little better. I'm talking to both Apple and Samsung. USB-C everything, and I do mean everything. This port can do everything, so just put it on everything. But in terms of future proof, the Galaxy S8 does win the award once again for not having some Samsung exclusive port. They sport USB-C, which I am a fan of. But they also sport the headphone jack, my oldest enemy. A lot of you who subscribe to me first probably watch my video on why the headphone jack is meaningless and why we need to move on from that. Lots of people disagree, I understand. And I still stand by everything I used to say. The only reason these companies keep it around is so that they can steal customers from Apple. But Samsung, you really should remove it on the next one. Your phone could be a lot better if you had more space on the inside, didn't have that giant hole at the bottom. But hey, at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me. I don't have to use it. It's just there. And those who want it have that option. So I can't complain. Doesn't really hurt anything. But more importantly, I want to praise Samsung for having an opinion about a port and actually backing it up. Okay, so Apple doesn't think we need a headphone jack. Samsung and Google think we do. Just got disagreeing viewpoints here. At least Samsung partnered with AKG to include headphones with the purchase of this phone. Good headphones. I've heard lots of people love them. I'm not a big fan of them. You know, when it comes to headphones, I haven't found a good way to measure quality because a lot of people just break it down to personal preference. See, I've been using Apple EarPods and of course AirPods for years now. And to me, those sound great. I love that they don't have the rubber seal. And with AirPods, of course, over the past four months, I have grown incredibly used and loving wireless headphones. And going back to the aux cord and having wires and the rubber seal is just not my style. I've just grown out of that and I don't like moving backwards. But my friends who try it and the people who also review the AKG headphones have said they're great, which is awesome. They're very premium, but not bad at all. They're just not what I'm used to. And I'm just really proud that Samsung said, we're going to have a headphone jack. Yes, we're going to have it on the bottom too, where it belongs. Unlike the Google Pixel who wants to put it on the top, even though the fingerprint reader is up here, which means that when you put it in your pocket, it's torn over. Samsung has the cable facing out to how it should be. That way, when you reach in your pocket, you can put your finger on the fingerprint reader, unlock the phone as you're taking it out, and the cable doesn't have to be turned around in an awkward way. This is ergonomical, and I applaud Samsung for just having that opinion that we need the headphone jack and backing it up. Both Apple and Samsung include headphones when you buy their smartphone. Google Pixel doesn't. That is ridiculous, especially when they poke fun at Apple for not having a headphone jack. So yes, I disagree that we still need the headphone jack, but I respect Samsung for making sure you enjoy that it's there. And how about that rear-facing fingerprint reader? Now we can get into the bad stuff about the S8, right? Full Apple Sheep over
for drive time. Here comes the rants. I really got used to it being there. It wasn't that hard. I thought I'd get confused with it being right next to the camera ridge, but I really didn't. Every time I intended to put my fingerprint where the fingerprint scanner was, I got it. And it unlocks very fast. It's very quick. Funny enough, even though they have the iris scanner and now with face unlock, I have found from experience that the fingerprint reader is really the best way to unlock the phone. It's quick. You don't have to be looking at it. And the iris scanner still has all the same problems I had with the Note 7, as in it's way too zoomed in and it has too many requirements. Like you can't be outside. Your eyes have to be open certain amount it's just not an efficient way of unlocking the phone like if it's on a table you have to hover over it like this fingerprint reader even though it's on the back is still just quick and easy it's the best way to do it not the way it should be i understand that having the fingerprint reader on the front is still the best case scenario and i really hope apple can figure that out on the iphone 8 which we're not sure if they have but i can say having the fingerprint reader on the back was not as confusing as i thought it would be i shouldn't have made fun of it too much for that as i did and a lot of you may be thinking i'm samsung biased now because i docked the google pixel big points and hated on it a lot for having the fingerprint reader on the back but keep in mind the Google Pixel had plenty of space on the front of the phone for a front-facing fingerprint reader and they didn't put it there they didn't because if they did it would look exactly like another phone they're competing with with Samsung to me it's a bit more justifiable because they use every inch of the front of the phone there is simply no room for the fingerprint reader on the front with the Google Pixel there was and they didn't do it so that's dumb with this its primary new feature is how the display goes edge to edge Edge. They couldn't figure out a way to put the fingerprint reader on the display, so moved it to the back. That's the best case scenario. That's smart and fairly efficient. Not the best thing possible. Hopefully, Apple can figure out how to put it in the screen, and hopefully Samsung can too and do that on the Note 8. But again, this is no deal breaker. It's fine. Now, let's talk about that extra button on the side. Samsung has tried a couple of times to build their own digital assistant. Usually doesn't do too well, and they're trying again with Bixby. And before I got the S8, I was sure I was going to hate Bixby. I thought I despised the fact that they put Put a whole new button on the phone for a digital assistant that's not ready yet. Like Samsung, you can't figure out how to program in the term Hey Bixby so it'll activate when you call it. So your solution is to put a whole new button that isn't reroutable so people can't change the function of that button right underneath the volume rockers? you think that upset me, wouldn't you? Well, if you thought I'd hate that, you'd be absolutely right. I completely agree with everything I just said. There is no counterpoint. Of all the Galaxy S8's great features, that is its dumbest. I don't know why they went that route. If you're going to ship a phone with a new digital digital assistant that's supposed to be voice control, don't ship it if you're not done with it yet. Just wait, leave that extra button off. You can just have the regular number of buttons and then when the digital assistant is ready, you can send it to all the Galaxy S8s via a software update. And then you can even put it on older phones like the S7 or the Note 5. We don't need another button, just wait it out, take your time. And again, this isn't really a deal breaker, it's just kind of confusing for people to have an extra button on there. And it doesn't stand up to the Google Assistant at all because hey, you can actually talk to the Google Assistant. Right now, Bixby is just kind of a widget page that you could easily access just by swiping to the side. I don't know why they thought they needed a whole new button for it. However, this phone overall is really the complete package. A gorgeous new display, an impressive battery, an awesome camera. We've got future-proof connectivity and a laundry list of Samsung exclusives built into the software and in terms of accessories. Yet a few weeks ago, I made a video explaining why the iPhone 7 Plus is a better buy still. <sighs> yeah, I said that, didn't I? I take it back. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm the... I'm the Apple sheep, but as of right now, and I know a lot of you don't believe me, but I am being honest in all my tech videos about my thoughts. I admit I'm biased, but that's only because I think everyone's biased a little bit, and I just think it's silly for anyone to say they're looking and grading with an unbiased perspective because we all grew up with different things. So I have to continue to be honest on this channel. Right now, I think if you're looking for a new phone, you'd have a happier experience if you bought the S8. Wow. Well, um... <laughs> It's, it's not easy to say this. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Steve. I guess I should probably um, call myself everything Apple Pro now because I'm just gonna say that I'm an Apple sheep, but really just talk about how great Samsung is, right? That's all he does. And now that's me. I've sunk to that level. <sighs> but wait.
I have been telling you everything that is great about the Galaxy S8. The display, the camera, the charging, the ergonomics. I haven't even mentioned that it's waterproof. But there's one thing I haven't mentioned. One thing everyone forgets about. One thing everyone misses. It's not about how great the display is. It's about what's on it. Yes, the S8 is a better buy than the iPhone 7 right now. However, there's one thing Samsung hasn't beat. The Apple ecosystem. Apple has designed all of its hardware and software to work together across all of its products. The iPhone 7 may not be the best smartphone anymore. However, you will not find a better smartphone with a better family of products. The Gear S2 or the Gear S3, they don't stand up to the Apple Watch in terms of beauty, customization, and overall elegance and third-party support. I've used them before. They're cool, but they're not quite an Apple Watch. That's why it's the most popular smartwatch, and it's staying that way. The iPad is amazing, and its biggest competitor is the Surface lineup. Android on a tablet still does not compete to that at all. Android on tablets is still really a joke, even with Samsung's new Galaxy Tab. That doesn't change the software. Windows 10 is a whole new battle, but there's no arguing. The optimization and continuity between macOS and iOS doesn't come near the cross-platform capabilities of Windows 10 and Android. They're designed by entirely different companies. So yes, go ahead and declare the Galaxy S8 is the better smartphone. You're right. But let's all be honest. Galaxy Gear VR is really dumb. I tried it once before, and now I've tried it again with the remote. It's still really expensive to pay for apps, and it's not immersive at all. That's all junk. And the speaker amplifier they included with the S8 is a complete joke. It's all fragile. It doesn't secure anything well, and it doesn't really amplify your music. Give me a break. If Samsung could achieve the S8's amazing, incredible premium quality across all of their products, not just the phone, because everything else they make is not near as top-notch as this. Like, why can't they remove the bezels on their new tablets? Why can't they add curved displays to more things like watches? If they could assure this quality across their whole ecosystem, yes, we'd have an Apple killer. But the thing is, the S8 is incredible. That has no accessory partnering devices to stand up next to what Apple can. In other words, a lot of people get asked the question, what is your favorite Apple product? That's debatable. Some people say iPad, some say MacBook or Apple Watch, but no one really asks what your favorite Samsung product is. Everyone knows the answer is the phone. That's because Samsung is really great at doing one thing and okay at everything else, where Apple is more consistent about all of their products. That's why the Galaxy S8 does make me want to ditch my iPhone. However, I don't because this is part of a bigger family. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one. Sorry, I bet that was confusing. Like, does he like the S8 or does he like the iPhone? Honestly, the S8's really good. If you have a very diverse ecosystem, you should buy it. You won't be disappointed with this phone. But if you like Apple, if you have that in your ecosystem, stick with the iPhone. It's not worth destroying your whole family of devices over. If you like Apple, just stick with the iPhone. Okay, bye.